Is this a biotin deficiency? Hi, I'm Chris Masterjohn, and I have a PhD in nutritional sciences. I am not a medical doctor, and nothing contained in this episode may be construed as medical or nutritional advice of any kind or a substitute, therefore. This episode is meant purely as scientific education. If you wish to act on any ideas presented in this episode, please consult your physician first and never take anything herein as a reason to contradict medical advice. With that said, enjoy the episode. Hey, Chris. Good afternoon. Hey, Danny. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Great. I hope you are. I have a follow-up to a question I asked in the December AMA regarding potential biotin deficiency. Okay. The quick recap of that previous question is that I have red scaly rashes around my mouth and nose that flare up every two to three weeks, and I treat yeah. the glucose cream. And in that context, I eat one whole egg and nine whites all cooked per day. And I had a had a biotin test done previously, and it was the serum one. And you suggested because it was in the bottom ten percent to potentially pursue a organic acid test. Yeah, I remember beta hydroxy isovaleric acid. Okay, yep. so I did that. Um, I did that, and I had the integrative health doctor that I've recently engaged order that for me. And unfortunately, although I asked that it would have beta, uh, beta iso Valeric or hydro, I sorry, <laughs> hydro, um, uh, beta hydroxy isovaleric acid. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I asked that it had that on it, and unfortunately, I didn't verify that the Great Plains Labs test he ordered had it, and it did not. What it had instead oh. was methyl citric acid, um, which for a PubMed study I found is also not as sensitive as beta hydroxy. Isovaleric. Yeah, beta hydroxy isovaleric acid is the most well established to be the most sensitive marker of biotin status. Yes. Um, and and actually it's typically it's done after a leucine challenge. Um which is uh they don't they don't uh no one does that. <laughs> um and so I mean generally in my experience um the way they have the reference ranges set on that should uh, on uh, the ones that do have it. So the ion panel has it. Um, the Genova ion panel has it. Um, and the way they set the reference ranges, I, I think it works without a leucine challenge. But um, but anyway, uh, I, I prefer the Genova ion panel because it has um, more, I, I just made a had a spreadsheet made up of the different markers that I wanted and the ones that were on the different organic acid panels and the ion panel has the most that line up with what what I was looking for. So that's why I use that one. But um, anyway, so I guess you're stuck with this one that doesn't have it. And what's your question? Yeah. So um, so the result that I got for the methyl citric acid was like in 47% of the range um, in the, the biotin test, the serum test was 10%. So given, um, based on your experience, Based on that result with the methyl citric acid and your experience, if you have any with it and biotin status, do you recommend I continue to pursue another organic acid test that includes beta hydroxy isovaleric acid um, to, to get a definitive answer considering potential costs involved? Well, I mean, I don't think that I, I don't think you really need that um, because you're eating one egg yolk for every nine egg whites. So residual avidin in cooked egg whites is high enough that that would be expected to cause a biotin deficiency. Uh, the symptoms line up with biotin deficiency and even, even just having biotin, the lower 10% of the range with a dietary factor that would be expected to cause biotin deficiency and symptoms that line up with it. I mean, to me, that's a biotin deficiency, and that's especially true if supplementing biotin resolves it. But, you know, the, I, the big evidence against the biotin deficiency would be if you supplement with biotin or you change your diet to make the egg yolks to egg whites one-to-one, -one, um, that, you know, if that does nothing, then I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board. But, uh, you know, preliminary to... Uh, having a result on the intervention um, being biotin supplementation or dietary biotin, 
my suspicion that that's Biden deficiency is just too strong to, um, you know, to say like, all right, go get another organic acids test. That makes sense. If so, let's say, you know, what would you consider a good approach to the diet change? I mean, obviously, you know, reduce the egg white or the uh, ratio to egg yolks. But let's say I did that. And how long would you think it would take for there to be some change associated with that? So say I go to, you know, two whole eggs or three whole eggs. I, I've got a cholesterol thing I have to manage as well. But um, if I did that, like what's the long? what's the rationale for uh, having the egg white to yolk ratio of nine to one? Just to get the protein in with the breakfast, it's kind of a conven- been a convenient thing that I've done, um, just as an easy way to get the the protein level. I'm I'm doing like a fifty percent carb, thirty percent protein, twenty percent fat now to try to pursue um, LDL reduction, keeping the fat lower. And so that was a convenient way, or has been a convenient way, to get the protein in. Yeah, I would just um, do like two scoops of whey protein and a whole egg. And so at that point you have um, definitely have the protein way up there. Um, and, you know, there's, there's no need given, uh, I mean, given, given the, um, the issues that you have, you know, you're trying to manage your cholesterol and you're trying not to have a biotin deficiency and given the diet, um, it's a lot easier to induce a biotin deficiency with nine egg whites than it is with zero egg yolks. So, you know, one, just one whole egg, uh, is, is already what you have in terms of yolks. Uh, and it gets rid of all the excess egg whites. Um, you know, but I would just, I would just take a five milligram biotin supplement every day for a couple of weeks. And that will kind of like, uh, you know, that should really help get your biotin stores up a lot faster. Um, and so, and that will also help you avoid the problem of wondering how long it's going to take if you have like a very, uh, sort of marginally adequate biotin intake. Because, alter, I mean, alternatively, you could eat nine egg yolks a day and zero egg whites, but that's going to totally destroy your other dietary goals. Um, And I mean, is, is like avoiding all supplements, one of your dietary goals? No, not at all. Um, In fact, I take several. So the, the biotin supplement, if that's, if that would be helpful, that's not something I'm trying to avoid. Yeah. I think it would be helpful both because it should help you get better a lot faster than, you know, a five milligram biotin supplement has, um, orders of like two orders of magnitude more biotin than an egg yolk does. Um, and so you're not going to absorb all of it, but you're going to probably saturate your absorption. Um, actually high dose biotin has surprisingly high absorption, but, um, you, you know, you're going to exceed your absorption capacity. Most likely you're going to saturate your biotin stores, uh, much more rapidly than with one egg yolk a day. And you're not going to have any more egg yolks than you do now that are detracting from your other goals with your cholesterol and your, and your protein and fat proportions. So, um, I would do that, but I, I think the big thing is the information, right? Like you will probably, if the biotin hypothesis is correct, you'll get better a lot faster than it would take you even to get another organic acids test and get the results back. So, um, you know, I, I think I, I would give it four weeks, but I think you would see improvement a lot faster than that. But, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't take much time or effort to take one capsule of five milligrams biotin. So, um, you know, I would just do that. And, you know, if you see nothing by four weeks, then got to go back to the drawing board. But, um, but, uh, and actually, you know, now that I think about it, um, and this is something I'm going to be covering in my book that I, I haven't covered anywhere before, but a high protein diet radically increases the biotin requirement and no one talks about it. <laughs> so your biotin requirement might, might be sort of like triple what you would think it would be based on the RDA. 
just because you're eating a, a higher protein diet. Um, but anyway, point being, um, you know, maximizing your biotin intake through a supplement is going to give you information a lot more quickly. And I, I think you would benefit a lot from having that information in quickly because if the, if the hypothesis is wrong, you'll know faster and you'll be able to move on and look for something else. Um, but if the hypothesis is right, um, you know, you don't have to take the supplement forever, but now, you know, the issue is biotin. And so you can, you can manage your diet accordingly and just go back to eating, just go back to sort of like eating a whole foods diet to maintain your biotin and take over time. That makes sense. Um, one related question to that, the, I seems like I've read somewhere that biotin supplementation could affect some other testing markers. If that's yeah. true, I'm, I'm in the process of working through the testing nutritional status cheat sheet and having some related tests. Are there, how concerned would you be about that? Yeah, you got to cut biotin out for four days before you run any tests. Okay. Well, that's great. Thank you, Chris. That, that helps a lot. You're welcome, Danny. Great talking to you. This episode was part of a Q&A for members of the CMJ Masterpass, a buyer's club with exclusive and massive discounts on your favorite premium foods and health products, including pasture-raised and wild meat and seafood, supplements, sleep accessories, water filters, phototherapy devices, and much more. As a bonus, you also get to participate in monthly private Zoom Q&As with me. You can join the Masterpass at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash masterpass and use the code q and spelled out as Q-A-N-D-A, Q&A, for a 10% lifetime discount. From now through February or March, whatever it takes to get it done, I will be working full-time on finishing my Vitamins and Minerals 101 book while reserving a portion of my time for my consulting clients. You can pre-order my book at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash book. In my consulting, I am neither a medical practitioner nor a coach. I serve as your data analyst and your strategist. I teach you scientific principles of health and wellness, help you analyze your data, and help brainstorm actionable strategies. You can sign up for a consultation at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash consultations. I will try to respond to comments here when I can, but my presence will be intermittent while I'm finishing my book. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next episode.